All right, so today we're going to be taking apart an Olympus OMD EM10. And there's a number of reasons you could want to do this, uh, which we'll get into later. But first of all, we're just going to get the camera open. So you're going to need a number of things. First, a small screwdriver, razor blade, tweezers. And since patience is going to be the number one skill you need for this project, I also like to bring in something like cold beverage and maybe some relaxing music. All right, so the number one thing for this whole project, it's not too difficult, you just need to take it slow, and the most important thing is not to lose any of the screws. I've actually already taken apart this camera, but I put it back together without any of the screws so that we can just do a quick disassembly. The lens, card. Now, take your screwdriver, and we're gonna start pulling off the screws. Look at the bottom, and you'll find eight screws that lets you remove the small, bottom uh, plate. Next, flip it over to this side. You'll find a screw underneath the HDMI port cover, and you'll find a screw on the opposite side, bottom left, there. You'll find one more screw underneath here, underneath the HDMI flap, after you've removed this plate. Next, flip the LCD screen forward, and you'll find two screws here and here. Pop up the flash, two screws here and here. On the other side, you'll find two more screws here and here. Next, you need the razor blade, and we need to peel up these rubber covers. Razor, they get in underneath the edge, and peel it away. It's a bit easier for me uh, since I already pulled it apart once. From there, you should find one, two, three, four screws holding on this small ring. And then you'll find a number of screws on this face. You'll find two here, these holes around the circle, couple here and one here. You do not need to remove for most repairs these four on the lens mount. You can, nothing bad will happen, but uh, they're not really necessary. Once you have these screws out, you should be able to start pulling the frame of the camera apart. So look on the bottom, you can see it sort of cracks open. And I found the most tension up here on the top. Make sure you don't miss any of the screws, but if you didn't miss any screws, you should be able to just slowly work it apart, try not to be too forceful with it, but it requires a little bit of force. And there you go, we have the camera apart. Um, now what you're gonna run into is there's this ribbon cable that connects the LCD and the buttons on the back of here to the camera body. It's all connected at this ribbon connector. There's a really small black flap that needs to flip up like this that lets the cable be released. So you can do that with your fingernail, flip it up, and then the cable will slide out without any force whatsoever. And then you have this back screen. There's two more screws here and here, right next to the strap lugs, that you need to remove if you want to lift the top plate off of the camera. These are the only screws inside the camera body itself that I needed to remove for the repair I was doing, um, but you might find if you need to take apart some of this stuff, you might need to remove more. And in addition, if you want to do that, you also need to flip another one of these tiny ribbon connectors right here. This one's a little bit tricky to get to. There's a total of four ribbon connectors through here. I found I had to remove this top one. So being extra careful with this section because there are some cables inside, you can work it free. And there you go. The thing about this, pulling this off, is it can definitely be useful if you need to get any access to the mode dials and stuff, the circuitry for the dials. You can't completely remove it unless you find a way to detach these cables right here which connect the flash to the camera body and they don't have a simple ribbon connector, they're actually soldered on there. So I couldn't quite figure out what the easiest way to do it, but it wasn't necessary for the repair I was doing. And if you're curious about a good way to keep track of all your screws, I use this piece of paper with some blue painter's tape and I attached the screws on it, wrote a caption, and tried to keep them in order in the same orientation uh, that I removed them from the camera. All right, now that you have your camera fully apart, you can think about doing what sort of repairs you might need. For example, you might want to replace your LCD. Um, for that, you might need to start taking apart some of the screws inside of here to get the actual LCD assembly out. Or if you can find an entire replacement back panel off of maybe an old broken camera, uh, you could just replace this entire thing. Um, if you find 
that your dials are skipping or stuck. That can often happen if you get uh, dirt in there or if you get especially any sort of conductive contaminants like salt water in there it can cause the mode dials to start glitching and you could rinse them out. And that is the big repair that I did on both of my broken cameras. Both of them have been exposed to salt water and a couple different things shorted out. On this camera in particular, the entire shutter mechanism uh, was stuck closed and every time you turned it on it would just flicker a couple of times and then the whole camera would, would shut off. And in order to fix that, I decided to take it apart to this point and just wash everything, including the sensor, the shutter mechanism, all of this circuitry with some isopropyl alcohol. I just got this at the grocery store for about two dollars and just really went to town, drenched the, the whole camera body, all the circuitry with isopropyl alcohol and that uh, dissolves, the salt water dissolves in it and it's rinsed free and then the alcohol evaporates and you're left with a, with a clean, clean camera body. And that removed whatever sort of short in circuitry that was keeping my shutter mechanism from working. On my other EM10, I actually had a similar problem, but the electronic viewfinder shorted out. Um, and so it was only showing white when you looked through the electronic viewfinder. And to fix that, I did basically the same. I pulled it apart as much as I could, and I just only drenched this top half of it. I just used distilled water, which, and I washed it out really well, and I let it dry for a couple of days. When I got it back together, it was working uh, it was working well again. Anyways, now let's try to put it back together. The only really hard part about this whole process is actually getting the ribbon cables back into their spots. You need to guide it back into the spot it came from and flip the little plastic lever back onto it. And then you move your thumbnail just flick it up. There we go. Inside here, I find the tweezers helpful. Uh, you'll have to look really closely when you have your own apart. They have a slight T-shape and the T-shape fits into some notches in the uh, receiving end. The ribbon has the T and then the receiver has some notches. So you need to make sure that the, the arms sort of fit into the notches before you can actually flip that down. So those are the two tricky ones. Then we need to put this one, big one back in and we can bring the camera back together again. One thing I should probably mention while this is apart is there is a, aside from the battery battery, there is also a capacitor in here which powers the uh, built-in flash. And that's actually even more dangerous in terms of electrocution hazard than this battery. And I haven't gotten electrocuted, but if you do happen to take it apart and get electrocuted, that is on you. I'm going to use a little bit of alcohol and a microfiber cloth to clean uh, the insides of this viewfinder. Uh, since you can't get at that anymore once you put it all together. And you don't want to so once you have all the ribbons connected, but before you put any screws back into it, uh, what I recommend is you open her up, pop battery in, and it should turn on. Uh, you also need a lens. So. Alright, you should be able to take a picture. It should look clear. You should make sure that the viewfinder is also functioning. You can see it's on. Uh, it will be out of focus since the little diopter thing is not quite connected properly. But that's just to double check um, because that will tell you right away if you failed to get any of the ribbons connected properly. Now don't forget, there are actually two screws on each side by the right there by the strap lugs we should have probably done before we attach the LCD but we can do those now but from here on out it's just attaching the screws in the same order that you removed them so get your sheet and All right, looks like it takes pictures. All right, well, that's all I got for the camera repair. Good luck to you guys if you try it. And if this helped you out, like the video, subscribe, 
and have a great one.